Hi everyone, this is Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to share with you the Mama Elephant 8th Anniversary release and review as well as a couple of slimline cards that I used a whole bunch of new products on. We're going to first go through the whole release and I'm going to show you everything that is being released here in September on their 8th anniversary. It is a lot. It is a lot of fantastic holiday and other uh, stamps and dies that can be used um, throughout the year, but definitely a lot of holiday. So first up, we have O Penguin Tree, the latest to the O Ping, uh, the the tree collection. There's kitties and dogs already, but of course the coordinating dies. The, this is just so much fun. The penguins are definitely a mama elephant staple. The latest little agenda is the foxes. How cute! I love these. If you got the stamp timber set, you're gonna love the little fox agenda. There also is a fox favor bag add-on. I know it's kind of hard to tell there, but I will uh, share more of that later. Then we have Santa Baby. Perfect, great new Santa images. How cute is that? Gorgeous new foliage frame. This is stunning, you guys. Absolutely love that. Big So Jolly. So Mama Elephant's big sentiments are really popular. Holiday word banners and coordinating dies, which make those very versatile. I'll use those on one of my cards. Let it snow, some new snowmen, cute little critter images, sentiments, and a tree, as well as coordinating dies and the let it snow sentiment die. So if you want to use that instead of the stamped greeting, the amazing slim woodland i'm using this for both of my cars today love that the style of best gift ever i love these little kids these are fantastic images cannot wait to show you what i'm making with that of course coordinating dies some new bunnies sincerely yours so this is a set that definitely doesn't have to be holiday beautiful and great for all of our card making friends Toasty Friends, which is cute little, all kinds of critters. We got pig, bunny, lamb, chick, and dog in front of a fireplace. Love the mixed holiday greetings. These are gorgeous. I'm gonna use two of these for my cards. I'm gonna share here in a minute. Gingerbread cookies, and of course, coordinating dies. These are darling. Imagine making some gift tags or whatever with those to give with your homemade cookies at the holidays. The pet petite treat box. And then I don't know if I mentioned, but there's a big Mary and Bright. I probably missed that somewhere in there. So another big sentiment. Let's go ahead and make a couple of cards with the new products. Um, I will be sharing lots more in the coming days. Plus I will be um, part of the blog hop here um, in a couple days as well on the 17th. So be sure to check out that. There's, it's a three day blog hop. I am starting with the Slim Woodland die. So this is made for the Slimline style cards. And you can see it die cuts a beautiful die cut scene. You've gotta love that. I die cut it from smooth white card stock and I'm coloring in the trees with Copic markers. I opted for Copic markers today quick, easy. The only part of the car of this panel that I'm coloring is this. Now that centerpiece will die cut like a, a snowy background. I'm not going to use it today. I opted instead to ink another panel that I'm going to place behind here, but that is an option if you want to use everything from this die. I am using markers in E53, 55, and 57 for coloring in my trees. And we're gonna do this for both panels. To save the time today, I really did kind of did this assembly line style, if you will. So I'm going to do both backgrounds, meaning I'm going to color the trees. That's gonna be the same. We're gonna ink both backgrounds for our snowy sky. Then we're gonna stamp and color all the critters we're gonna be using for both scene cards. We'll stamp and emboss our sentiments put the cards together and then some finishing detail. But starting 
for sure with the coloring of our trees. This actually went a lot quicker than it appears. I had to refill these markers um, because they were dry. That's probably what took the most time and it, that didn't even take that long, but I had tried to color them without, or color the first one without refilling my markers and that was taking a long time. So I'm gonna color both of those trees. We're gonna set the slim uh, window aside and we're going to ink up a background with Mermaid Lagoon and Chipped Sapphire Distress Inks. I'm using regular Distress Inks, not oxides here. I find that the regular gives a little bit more of a vibrant color. This is one of my favorite color combinations for a winter scene background or an underwater scene background. It's kind of a favorite color combination just in general. I'm using blender brushes to blend these two colors together, kind of the darker chipped sapphire along the top edge, and then Mermaid Lagoon, probably about three quarters of the way down the panel here, because we don't have to take it to the bottom because remember our slim window has a snowy border. So as long as that's all covered and looks good and you can see the blue back behind the tree branches, that's perfect. We're gonna spritz it with water from a distress sprayer and let our backgrounds air dry while we stamp and color our images. I'm using images from O Penguin Tree, Little Fox Agenda, and Let It Snow. And we're gonna be doing a little mix and match of all of this. How did I know which images to stamp and color? I laid them out on my background and kind of figured out my placement before putting them in my Misty and stamping them on the Nina 110 pound weight heavy smooth white cardstock. I have used a ink for Copic coloring. This is the Hero Arts Intensified Black ink. And then I am coloring in my images with some Copic markers. I have listed the colors across the top of the screen. I'm also listing those on my blog as well as what I used for each image. The foxes are my favorite new color combination for coloring foxes. So if you saw the stamp timber set with Simon Says Stamp that Mama Elephant did, they had foxes that are, were a little bit bigger in size, more like the snowman and the large penguins on my card here, but the same style. And I used this color combination of YR31, 24, and 27 with warm gray zero zero and two to color them and I loved how it turned out. So I'm doing the same thing for these little fox agenda. And can I just say, I love that Mama Elephant keeps bringing out little agenda critters and images because mixing and matching these is phenomenal. I am only using little fox agenda and then I'm using this little snowman from Let It Snow for that scene card but go ahead and take your critters from other little agenda sets and mix and match. I think that would be really, really cute. If you guys wanna see me mix and match the little agenda sets, please drop me a note and let me know, as well as drop me a note in the comments and tell me what from this September 8th anniversary release you wanna see me use. I wanna know what you guys want to see and I will definitely be working on those videos probably the first part of October. So let me know now so I can get those planned and filmed for you guys. We're gonna color in the rest of the foxes. They are tiny, but I did work to get the blending for the fur really good. We don't have to use near as many colors for the little accessories. So we've got cute little scarves and a tiny little snowman, which is so cute. Um, a gift package, candy cane, top hat, wreath and bell, Santa hat. Um, this little next guy's got some stars. And then of course the images that don't have anything but or any accessories. They are without a doubt really darling and really, really fun. Big fan of all of the little agenda line from Mama Elephant. I thought that this snowman from Let It Snow was just the perfect size to work with these, uh, any of the little agenda images, as well as it's a perfect little snowman 
to go with our little snow family if we want to. So you can totally do so many different things there. But I thought he was cute and I, I really wanted to mix in a, a stamp from another set with the little fox agenda. So our fox card is actually going to have the Let It Snow snowman and top hat as well as some little greenery we're going to add to the trees for just a little touch of fun. And then just going to add in the warm gray portion for the faces with warm gray zero zero and warm gray two. Very, very light, very quick coloring. Don't forget the little chest area on the foxes. For whatever reason, I kept almost forgetting that. So I'd have to go back and add in a little bit of that there. Our 35 and 46 are the colors I used for my reds today. Keep in mind, if you're seeing me use a red color combination here, I'm gonna be using that for anything else that I color for any of these images. I did end up using quite a few markers, but I tried to repeat and not pick a completely different red color combination. I have noticed a couple of comments lately about new card makers or those of you new to Copic coloring and kind of some questions about Copic markers. And since I've been using them quite a bit again here lately, I did want to touch on that. They are an investment. I have had mine for years and years now. I refill them as needed, as I was mentioning when I was coloring the tree. Because they're an investment, I purchase mine a few at a time. And I still, I do not have the whole collection of markers. I do have a lot now, but I would buy them just a few at a time. And if you're interested in starting your collection and doing the same thing, I would try to find them when they were on sale, number one. And number two, my biggest tip is to try to buy them in color combinations that can be used together. For example, the color I used for the fox, why are 31, 24, and 27? I would buy those three together because those can be used for a lot of things. They're also a fantastic color combination for fall leaves, for pumpkins, um, for other fur, for other animals. I use them all of the time. This BG 10 and 13, and often I will incorporate BG 18 in here. It's a fantastic aqua color combination. So try to pick colors that go together and you will be so much happier because you can color a whole, you know, section with those markers. But if you just picked one from one color family and one from another, um, they don't go together and you can't do the good blends. I did add a little R30 for the cheeks on my snowman and my penguin and then blended them out with a colorless blender. Um, you can also use something else that has a lot of colorless blender in them. That is another tip about Copic markers. A blender necessarily is not a blender in this case. In this case, pretty much only. It actually kind of removes color or moves color around as opposed to actually blending. So it's a little bit misleading, but it is a very valuable tool. I added a little of that frosty fun color to our snowman with BG10 and 11 because I really like how that looks as far as giving them a touch of color, but they still look white. And it was really kind of just around the edges. Then we're adding really bright color to the accessories. So scarves and hats, YR04 for the carrot noses. Also using YR04, for the uh, beaks and feet of the penguins. And then my favorite thing is probably adding detail to the accessories with a white pen. So I'm taking this white pen and adding in a stripe detail to this beautiful scarf. The scarves on these snowmen are so much fun. So we've got a red one and then we've got this pink scarf, which we're gonna add a plaid detail to with our white pen. Um, the earmuffs for this snowman my tip for that to kind of make them look fuzzy is I'm going to take a white pen. You can also use like a stardust pen that's more glittery or any color pen that you want really. And I'm just going to do little dots all over this and it's going to give it that 
kind of fuzzy type of effect. So just teeny, teeny, tiny dots here. And then of course the little back and forth stripe detail to make the scarf look plaid. But I love the little details for accessories and you're gonna see me add quite a few. Um, both of the snowmen here, the small penguin scarf is gonna be polka dotted. And then the hat for the bird is also gonna be polka dotted. The little penguin holding the garland of stars, those are gonna be rainbow. I thought that would be a cute, fun little accent for that guy to be holding. And these penguins are from O Penguin Tree. So they're the individual penguin images from that. I love mixing and matching. I really wanted to share in this video, um, instead of focusing completely on maybe one stamp set or, or a couple of stamp sets, how you can mix and match across the board. And of course, yes, I'm focusing on new with this video, but also keep in mind, maybe you just pick up the slim window and you use it with your Christmas critters you have from years past. They will work with that. And that's what I really love is that the styles will mix and match with things you already have. You may already have a penguin set. You might have a snowman set. You can use those with some of the new product or mix and match with your favorites from this release. The penguins themselves, I used C5 and 7 for the dark part of the penguin and warm gray 00 and 2 for the light white part of the penguin. I had those colors out already, so I didn't go pick anything else out and it worked fine. Here's those polka dots for the scarf. And also a few little highlights here and there will really kind of help um, just add some nice detail to these images. Now I originally forgot to color in the bird. You're gonna see me color in his hat and his scarf. He's all decked out, but I forgot to give him color. I will be adding some color with my BG 11 and 10 markers with R30 for the cheek. I don't remember if I do that on camera or not. Um, the Santa hat with the antlers sticking out is kind of funny too. That's also from O Penguin Tree. And then we're going to take all of these images, grab the coordinating dies and die cut everything. So that's my next assembly line style step is to die cut everything. I will do that off camera as it's a little time consuming. These were brand new for me. I had to snip everything apart and line them up. I did run through my die cutting machine with this initial stamped collection three times, I think. So I would line up a bunch, run it through, line up a bunch more, run it through, etc. I did stamp more of the little green leaves individually and die cut those as well. Next, we're gonna take our slim window and line it up over the background so we know where we want to stamp our mixed holiday greetings sentiment. We'll set our window aside, prep our cardstock with a powder tool, and then stamp our greeting with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. I like how white embossing looks, especially for holiday cards, especially on a winter sky background, as it just ties into that wintry feel, that frosty fun feel that we're looking for. I used Spreading Festive Holiday Cheer. This is gonna be the snowman and penguin card. Look how pretty that white emb embossing looks on the blue. For our second background, this is gonna be a combination of the holiday banners and the mixed holiday greetings. So I'm only doing the mixed holiday greetings right now. We'll do the banner in a bit, but I wanna lay it out so I make sure and stamp the mixed holiday greeting low enough to give room for the banner. We're gonna to stamp to you with love on this background with our clear embossing ink and heat emboss with the white embossing powder. So that is the mixed holiday greetings. These are phenomenal. I love this greeting set. I have a feeling it's gonna be very, very popular. Um, greeting sets that work with anything are always a huge hit. All right, let's move that out of the way. 
and gra I did color the bird. So before I die cut that bird, I did go ahead and add a little bit of color here. So that's BG 10 and 11, much, much better. And now I have die cut everything and we are going to assemble our cards before the finishing details. Starting with, we're gonna use a little double-sided adhesive just around the four sides of our slim window frame and then pop it over our background that we've stamped and embossed. I stamped and embossed before adhering anything because it really helps limit how much embossing powder might stick to areas I don't want it to stick and then heat emboss. So if at all possible, I like to stamp and emboss before I have done any assembly. We're gonna do that for both backgrounds and then it's time to put them together. I'm going to just start with my largest images from the Let It Snow stamp set. So those are our two bigger snowmen. We're also going to kind of lay the rest of our images out and make sure we like where everything goes before we assemble that. So we got penguins out here on either side and then the little tiny penguin. And then what's great with the slim window, you can see it's got that nice little die cut snowy border. So it makes it real easy to tuck some of the images back behind if you want to. I also have some of them up on front. We're gonna add all those little green sprigs here from the tree. I think I did about three per card. Add in black gel pen detail for the eyes. Any additional highlights I might've missed some Nouveau White Blizzard Sparkly Iridescent to the Star Garland and a little heart accent right between the two snowmen. Let's put our Fox Agenda background together. Kind of lay out all of these fun images plus the Let It Snow Snowman. And we're gonna have it look like the little fox with the stars is standing next to that snowman. And we'll start gluing all of these guys down. I think it's really um, so great that it shows the versatility that two different size of image sets, or three, um, with the Let It Snow and O Penguin Tree being a little bit bigger than the Little Fox Agenda and how well each of them work with this background. Really, really awesome background. I bet this background is very, very popular. The Slim wood Woodland background, I think I kept saying Slim Frame, Slim Woodland will be very popular too because it's great for scene building for winter and holiday scenes. My tweezers are a great, are, they're a great tool to help hold things down, put things where you want them to go. I can't recommend a good pair of craft tweezers enough one of my most often used tools. Once we have our images all in place and where we want them to go, we need to finish the sentiment for this card. So we are using one of the other brand new sets. So there's the mixed holiday greetings, which is only greetings, and then there's the holiday word banners, which is also just greetings, but in banner form with coordinating dies. Love, love, love this. They are really cute. Um, I picked Merry Christmas so that it would read Merry Christmas to you with love when I combine the two sentiments together. And I wanted this to be in color and to appear to be hanging from the tree border up above. We'll stamp it with red, die cut it with the coordinating die, and then we're gonna pop that in place. And I love this set. Imagine putting little, like having them go across a vertical slimline card and sticking birds on them. You could use a whole bunch of them. Wouldn't that be cute too? I just, there are so many things you can do with these greeting sets. Very, very versatile. Also want to recommend a pair of snips for trimming apart your dies. Makes it so great. And if you're like my friend Jill, you need safety goggles for trimming apart your dies. I don't know if everyone does this. I kind of like to live dangerously, I guess. I usually hold them down in a trash can because I don't want those little metal pieces flying up into my eye. But she wears safety goggles, which I think is awesome. And I'm gonna tuck my banner up here along the top. I did use tweezers. I put a little liquid adhesive on the back of it 
And then I'm using my tool in one to help hold up that edge of the tree and tuck that in place. How sweet is that, you guys? And I think the banner works with these little agenda critters so well. Um, just the size and scale was perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Mama Elephant 8th anniversary release and review video, as well as a couple of brand new card examples using products from the 8th anniversary release. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Mama Elephant products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you next time.